working for the players is basically what I do. Um, what I've been thinking about a lot recently is the fact that uh, community management, you can talk to a billion different people who work as a community manager, and they'll all tell you what they do in different ways. They do different things, and it's spread across a lot of stuff. What I end up doing is uh, social media management, so Twitter, YouTube, um, forum moderation, and I've also learned how and when to use that little smiley poo emoticon, uh, which I said emoticon, it's an emoji. It makes me feel very old. Um, I'm 25, by the way, so if that gives you some context about how and when people get into the industry, it's usually, it's usually a bit later. That's my face, uh, and my YouTube channel and my Twitter are basically where I started uh, making mistakes before I got into the industry. So YouTube, I made Let's Plays and stuff like that. And on Twitter, I talked about literally everything I was doing to uh, anyone who would listen. And I think that's probably one of the most important lessons, or the first most important le lesson that I learned <clears throat> is talking to people in the industry is unfortunately one of your best choices if you want to go straight for the job that you love. Um, think of a, a studio that you enjoy the work of, so um, someone, either a micro studio or EA or Codemasters who are around the Midlands, and send them an email. Tell them what you're doing, ask for help, and uh, if, if they don't reply, don't be too heartbroken. They've probably got a lot going on. But um, there's, there's a, a community inside of the industry that you have to become a part of. And it's becoming a part of that by going to conventions. If you, if you have the opportunity to go to conventions, then that's probably priority number two two beyond um, finding a channel where you can show off what you're doing, usually social media. Uh, I can't currently think of any other ways that quite as, as widely touch a, a, a diverse amount of people. And uh, showing people what you're doing is uh, the, it's the best way to, to let people know what What's going on? Because if no one knows who you are and you send them a CV, uh, they're going to choose the person who they've heard of more often than not, unless they know them for being awful, which, uh, which can happen. So I work at the Art Arch Creatives. It's a co-working space in Leamington Spa. It's uh, got three resident micro studios who are all hiring, and I think that's probably another pertinent point that carries on from the last talk. There are a whole bunch of micro studios, whether they call themselves indie or not. And a lot of them are looking for community managers, for artists, for programmers, for ways to expand. And I, I don't know if you've seen, I don't know if it's just a hashtag on Twitter, but the indie apocalypse is coming. Everyone who isn't in like a huge studio and uh, is protected by vast vats of money. Uh, is, is going to go under. And that's not quite uh, how I see it from the perspective of working in a small studio. There is interdependence mm, socially and, and for visibility reasons. But if, if one small studio collapses, uh, unfortunately, it happens. But if one small studio just disappears off the face of the earth, the others aren't going to topple. Uh, topple down with them. Um, I don't know if you followed like the debates that are going on, but there are some very clever people talking about it for, for both, uh, both sides of that debate and saying very interesting things about how they, uh, how they perceive it. And um, I don't know if any, anyone's familiar with Steam Spy, but uh, the, the creator of that has a medium.com page where you can, you can read all of his insights into to how, people, how people work and yeah, how they, this micro studios games are doing on Steam specifically, but yeah, and how the numbers don't necessarily support that. Uh, I, oh, okay, that screen's different. I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, three resident studios, and I help all of them. 
uh, which is, a, I think, a very unique position because normally someone is hired by a single studio or a single company to do one job. I'm doing that one job for three different places. So you might know Modern Dream from Typing in the Dead Overkill and LA Cops. There's Team Lumo, who just released Lumo's Cat, which is amazing. It's on iOS. You should download it. Uh, and Team Calvino, who made uh, Morphopolis and Calvino Noir. And these are a very small five-person studios, five people each, and they need help. And this is why community managers are becoming more common in these micro studios. They need help to promote because the programmers, the producers, the designers, the, the artists don't have time. They need to produce, they need to code, they need to make art. And being on social media 24-7, although it's, it's quite a lot of fun talking to people on Twitter, uh, they need someone to do that for them. And I think a lot of places are realizing this now. I've seen some smaller studios making jobs available for people that are interested in doing this job. So they all needed my help. And uh, so this is what I do now. I talk to people on the internet. I write creative copy. And if you want to be a community manager, I don't who want, actually is interested in community management. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, this is what I do. I'll skip over this one a bit faster. Uh, yeah, it's, it's making sure that the marketing and, and being a, a one-person communications team is, uh, is a bit difficult because there's a lot of disciplines and a lot of different things going on in different places, and you need to be everywhere at once. And for a small studio, building an audience is the biggest challenge, and it's the one I'm, I'm tackling right now. Um, so the, in an ideal world, you will have three hobbies, one to keep you fit, one that entertains you, and you know, the, the one thing that you love about, above all else, and that really shouldn't be video games, by the way, because <laughs> um, being a developer gets you no time to play video games, and you, uh, you tend to get tired of them after playing the same three minutes of the same game every day, day after day, and conventions. Uh, wait, where was I going with this? OK, and, and the th I was looking at that list and not the one on my hand. Uh, and the third hobby is the one that you learn from. And my third hobby was YouTube. I, I really enjoyed it. The, it started off because my friend, I really had no interest in video games until I was about 19. Uh, I was doing a biochemistry degree at that point. And just, you know, if you need context, it's, it's quite easy to transfer a lot of skills, but it did take me five years of uh, making mistakes um, by myself and, and making friends who, who were at these conventions and on social media and um, being and growing an audience on YouTube. And I think that isn't necessarily just uh, useful for people who want to go into community management. If it, it can spread into pretty much any discipline. If you're doing something that you want to either learn or get a job in, then sharing it is generally a good idea. There's a really, I don't, I'm going on a tangent now, but if you've played the beginner's guide, uh, it's, it's really quite interesting in that it talks about the creative process and if you're learning about something, then no matter whether it's boring, like how to do like a really impressive tweet, um, there's something creative in that, and you can you can learn from just doing things, failing, failing better than last time, and it's um, show, showing people that. Uh, showing people the process and uh, having a collection at one place, for me it was YouTube, where you can point people to and whenever you meet someone, talk their ear off. Seriously, I, you don't, they don't have to care about what you're doing. Meeting people face-to-face -face usually is best, but uh, talking, talking their ear off, uh, whether they want you to or not, is, is how you 
You, you make a reputation. If, you, if you're known for one thing, so I was not known. I, there are a few people within kind of a, a circle of people in the industry who knew that I love video, uh, indie games, and it's, it's what I was known for, and that's why I got the email to become the community manager or, or go for an interview to become the community manager for Arch Creatives, and other people didn't. So the fact that they knew I talked to literally all of the people that worked there, and yeah. Um, this is a holdover from the uh, community management part of the talk. But I guess you're not quite so interested in that because I saw like two hands. So if you're interested in uh, game interviews, game recruitment process, uh, or the um, self-promotion process, then I can take any questions about that that uh, you'd like to answer, uh, like to be answered. Um, I'll start with the bottom one, because I think that's probably the most interesting. Uh, your, your, that third hobby is something that you're going to be passionate about. You want, you, want, you want to learn it. And moving from science to video games, that passion uh, moving into... Passion isn't enough to get you a job. It's not enough to motivate you forever. But if you have that passion to start off with, you can build, you can build a routine. So even if you're, you're feeling awful and you've had a lot of coffee, uh, you can still work on the thing that you know you love. It's just not, you're not feeling it in the moment. And you can continue talking about it. You continue working on it. Uh, and that passion is what starts the drive to then move into a job or just, you know, something that you really enjoy. Um, and I think the other points on that slide are all things that I think are very important to community management. But if you are a developer at a studio, then you're going to have an, a, probably a Twitter account, maybe a Facebook group that uh, you're going to be, have some kind of public face most of the time, especially in micro studios. You're going to, to need to help out the team because I, I don't know if anyone's, if anyone remembers the numbers for like GTA. The development budget was a ridiculous number, hundreds of millions of pounds, but the marketing budget budget was an identical number to they, they spent exactly the same on marketing and. Especially micro studios, they need all the help they can get because they can't spend 100 million on a TV advert. So any public facing person needs at least a modicum of the first two. So you're going to be, need to be able to hold a conversation. But also the second two, honesty, being honest with your audience, knowing who they are, um, knowing what they're interested in, what can you know pique their interest, and knowing what you need to say without upsetting them. Uh, it's it's not always it's not always going to work like that, especially as community management, just because you're talking to so many people in so many different places. But yeah, being honest with them yourself, and uh, I guess the press as well. You're going to be spending a lot of time talking to them, doing interviews. Um, I think honesty is, is key if you're going to be talking to anyone ever. Or you could lie to them. I don't know. Uh, it might work out. So, yeah. Questions? Hello. It's 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 a, it's a sideways kind of wiggly movement. It's not necessarily downwards. Um, uh, I think, OK, this is going to be a long story. I, I went into biochemistry because I thought 
I had to go to university. And um, I have since learned that becoming and growing your skills and, and finding a job that you do love is way more important. And I went to university for the wrong reasons. And by the end of the third year, I really, am I allowed to swear? I really hated it. Um, so when my friend started writing for a video games website, I was like, hey, that sounds like a lot of fun. And so I started my YouTube channel at that point. Uh, and that's where I learned that video games were the thing that I wanted to do. I not only loved video games, I, I loved writing about video games. I loved making videos about video games. And I, I've dabbled in development. They're all awful, um, the things that I've made. But the creation process is what you've got to love. So that's how I found out and then you know, started working on this, I, I suppose, a, a persona, online persona at conventions and meeting people. That's, that's what drove me from one to the other. Hate. <laughs> Hello. Um, working on a relatively small game means that the amount of hate that I've had is limited to people complaining about bugs and saying that, I don't know, a game, a free game on the iOS store has in-app purchases on it, which um, they were angry about and they left a one-star review and it was very funny. Um, but respond, so you wanted to know how I respond to people like that. <laughs> uh, inevitably, in video games, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard this because this is a, a horrible hashtag going around. There's a lot of very angry people. Um, there's a lot of people that may not be associated with that hashtag, but do make the, the industry, I, I suppose, the entire industry, a very depressing and un, unhappy place to be sometimes for some people. Um, and to deal with that, I think talking to those people can get you so far. So say on a, a Steam forum I moderate, I talk to people if they're like, oh, this thing didn't work. And I'm like, oh, sorry to hear that. And then I either tell the programmer or, or we try and find a workaround or something like that. But there's another level beyond that where we need to use moderation tools, so banning people. I mean, if, if there's some guy who leaves uh, a very evil-sounding um, arch-nemesis tirade on your, on your forum, then sometimes you just need to cut them out because that person, they're not helping you. They're, they're just there to vent. And um, no matter where you go, there will be people that have, have some kind of personal thing that, that affects them, that affects no one else really, um, but matters to them a lot, and they will tell you about it. Um, but yeah, you, you need to use your discretion to, to know when to uh, either to cut them out or, or find uh, a way to calm them down. I don't know. It's, it's a judgment call from case to case, but yeah, it's can be worse than other industries. Hello. What's your YouTube channel? Oh. Uh, boom. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, that's not on there. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash gaming FTL. It's not quite as <laughs> impressive as you might hope. Uh, what is FTL? Uh, whatever you want. Uh, for me, it first started off with For the Lazy, and then it was Faster Than Light, but I'm thinking about changing it because FTL is a game. But I was there first, honest. Uh, anyone else have a question? You first. So you just said how you punish the bad players or bad behavior. Is there a way how you reward the good behavior? 
Um, yes, actually. One thing I've done recently is, uh, so we want people to talk about the new game, Lumo's Cat, and they were doing, they were doing screenshots and, and taking pictures of themselves playing, and I don't know if you've seen the new iOS 9 replay kit. They were making Let's Plays with it. It was awesome, and the people that we like, the people we want to encourage to stick around and talk to us and help, it, help us make it an awesome game, we, well, we started off by sending them some uh, Paisley tattoos, you know, the temporary tattoos. We, you know, with physical merchandise or with uh, a position in the community, you can reward uh, a, positive, a positive player. Um, yeah, yeah, you can, absolutely. Hello. Okay, yeah. Tips for networking in person. Um, I would say if you're, let's use the convention example again, if you're at a convention, find someone you've either talked to online and say hello to them. They will, if they talk back to you online, then they will be interested in meeting you in person. And uh, I'm sure they will be interested in what you have to say. Um, if you're, you don't know anybody in the room, just join a group of developers. Everyone's really friendly uh, and know that you're not the only person in the room who doesn't know anybody and you're not the only person in the room who doesn't know what they're doing or talking about because there are a lot of people like that. Um, if people don't want you to talk to them, You'll know. <laughs> uh, I think I can talk for the majority of developers. If they're at a social function, then they will want to talk to anyone. If you go up to someone that either you know, uh, not personally, like uh, the person you'll probably see most at a uh, convention is Rami Ismail, and he's very clever, and he doesn't mind anyone talking to him. Um, so yeah, if there's someone you want specifically to talk to, make a beeline for them uh, and be a little bit rude and interrupt them. Just, you know, say, hi, can I, can I interrupt you? Um, people really won't mind. Very, everyone's very friendly in, inside the industry. Um, oh, hello. Uh, conventions, what are the best ones? Um, ooh. Okay. It really depends. You've, you've got to pick and choose the, the ones that you know people are going to be at, the people that you want to talk to. Uh, the best conventions, I don't know, EGX isn't, wasn't that good this year. It was fun, but it wasn't that good. Um, Game City next week. Find a day. It's on for tw from the 22nd tomorrow till the 30th. Uh, and there are tons and tons of industry people there as well as people from the public, but everyone turns up because it's a really good time. Go to Game City, uh, possibly a place called Ve uh, the Feral Vector, which is a lot smaller, but it's, it's good for getting a lot of very intelligent people in the same place. And there are also great talks there. Um, oh, goodness. I don't, read the, the Guardian. There was an article today that listed all of the best uh, conventions. So go on to Guardian. I think uh, it's something like, I can't remember the title, but yeah, it's on there. Something to do with conventions. That one. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be more specific. Uh, uh, we've got time for one more question. Is that one at the back or so? Yeah. Hi. I'm just really a manager. Um, do you worry about really getting too big? Because that's why some of the parts are. I find that when they get too big, they kind of lose where they're going. Is that something that worries you? Uh, that's not a problem I've run into right uh, so so far, but it is possible to not have one that's too big, but to have a subgroup that ends up getting too loud and too boisterous, and they end up forcing everyone else out. Um, they they force people out because their opinion ends up getting heard more often, and they say 
They say a lot of things that uh, maybe the other people disagree, and then they leave. And that's fine if you just want those, those group of usually very passionate people in your community. But it can just kill off the rest. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's a problem with communities getting too big, uh, aside from the fact that if you're just one person and you're talking to 300,000 people, then you know that might be a bit difficult. But at that point, some semblance of self-management tends to happen. So yes and no, but mostly no.